fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let go of me, I am Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were camped not far from the town of Cedar Bend. The camp seemed empty after Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, had ridden away. Both the masked man and his Indian companion had been silent for some time. It was the sound of approaching hoofbeats that brought them to attention. They were familiar hoofbeats. It's Victor. They were the hoofbeats of Dan Reed's own horse, the son of the mighty silver. Dan, come back. Go, go, Victor. Hold on, hold on. Steady, boy. Dan, what are you doing back here? I had to come back. I, I had... thought we had settled the matter of your schooling. Yes, I know that. But when I got to town, I found a newspaper. Look, here it is. A newspaper? It's the Springville News. Someone must have brought it in on the stage. I had to show it to you. Barnaby Boggs' name is in it. Barnaby Boggs? You told me a lot of stories about him. Oh, him rainmaker. Yes, a rainmaker, and he sold a patent medicine. He was an old swindler, wasn't he? Well, he was until he reformed. Well, may I see that paper, Dan? Sure, I brought it for you. I wonder if Barnaby has gotten into trouble again. I thought he'd settled down on the ranch. Here, he's advertising a sale. Well, look, Tonto. Boggs is selling his old medicine wagon, his banjo, and the cannon he used to fire when he posed as a rainmaker. Oh. And that's not all. Look over on this page. He wants to sell a gold watch, a collection of fancy vests, and a gold top walking stick. He was always proud of that walking stick. He wouldn't part with it unless he was desperately in need of money. Ah. Maybe we go find out what trouble, huh? Let me go with you. Please let me go with you. I've always wanted to know Barnaby Boggs. Golly, the things you've told me about... Then him... you've got to get to school. A new term starts in a few days. Oh, golly, school. I can learn things traveling with you and Tano. Dan, I thought A lot thought of fellas that... my age are working and earning money. By the time I'm through school, they'll have saved enough to buy a ranch. You'd or... like to work and accumulate things, huh, Dan? Well, yes, if I can't travel with you and Tano. Then. We've just come through a war. In that war, people lost things that they'd spent a lifetime accumulating. Money, their property, their homes. Yes, even their friends and relatives. At your age, you've got to accumulate things that no one, no army can take away from you. Instead of saving money in a bank, you've got to store up knowledge in your mind. Your brain is your bank, Dan. A bank in which you can deposit information... Knowledge is your capital. What you store in your brain can never be taken from you. It's a bank from which you can draw dividends all of your life. Oh, gosh, I... 
I hadn't thought of it that way. The man who's going to be president of our country in 30 or 40 years is just about your age right now, and he's in school. He's preparing for that job, even though he's not aware of it. And the men who'll be judges and senators and governors, commanders in our Navy and generals in our Army, they're all your age. Now tell me, what's more important, a little money in a bank or a mind that's trained to make you a leader of other men, huh? I know. You're right, sir. Well, I'll say goodbye all over again and start for school. Now, just a minute, Dan. The town of Springville is on your way to school. You plan to spend one night there to rest your horse. Yes. Not and I'll go as far as Springville, will you? Oh, golly, that'll be swell. And we'll try to find out why poor old Barnaby Boggs needs money so badly. That night found the Lone Ranger camped in the town of Springville while Dan and Tonto made inquiries to learn the details of Barnaby Boggs' dilemma. They learned, among other things, that the former skinflint had become a substantial citizen with a small ranch of his own. They learned further that Barnaby had become a married man. Would have been bad enough before he got married, but now losing his ranch is even tougher than ever. How did Barnaby make out on his sale? Uh, Not good. Poor old fella. I felt sorry when I heard about it. No one wanted the stuff he had to sell. No? He couldn't even sell his gold top cane for anywhere near what it was worth. His vests were too big for most people there, and who'd want to buy an old cannon? Hmm. We'll call on him in the morning, Dan, as soon as you start on to school. Sir, if Tanner thinks he's going to foreclose on that mortgage... He's due for the surprise of his overextended life. Yes, indeed. I tell you, Sarah, the mere sight of that man makes my blood boil. I can feel it coursing through my veins at fever temperature whenever I look at him. Well, your blood's due for some red hot coursing, then, Barnaby. Because he's just drained up out front. He's. He's not here to foreclose, is he? Today? No. Nor any other day. The mortgage comes due tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the evening. He'll not get a penny before that time. No, sir, not a penny, not a farthing, not even a kind word. Well, don't stand there looking at this place with an eye to what you'll do if you get it. I was just going by, Mr. Boggs. I haven't heard of you raising $5,000 in cash. Perhaps you've forgotten. There's a little matter of a payment. A mortgage that comes due tomorrow. Oh, yes, 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 so there is. Slight matter. Slipped my mind. Slipped your mind, eh? Well, isn't it lucky that I stopped by to remind you? At the moment, you're trespassing on my property. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back at six o'clock, and I'll have the sheriff with me. Don't you forget it. What's more, I'll have this property. You're not fooling me for a minute. I know you haven't got the cash. Your bold front doesn't deceive me. Instead of that. Get up there. That, that mean money grabbing old. Oh, Barnaby Hill foreclose on that mortgage. Most other bankers are willing to string along with the cattle owners until conditions get better, but. But Tanner. Money hungry land grabber. Trying to take advantage of the conditions a war brought about. Barnaby, you don't have the cash to pay him, do you? My dear, prepare for a surprise. I do have the cash. Barnaby. I'll tell you where. Sakes alive, Sarah, look down the road. There's company heading this way. Company for us. Man on a white horse. He... Barnaby, that man is mad. Indeed he is, my dear. And he's as welcome as the flowers in May. That's the man I've told you about. Best friend I've ever had. The Lone Ranger. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Boggs Ranch. Hello, Barnaby. Sarah, put that breakfast back on the table. All right, Barnaby. Come in, come in, my friend. Come in and gather around the board. You said it, big fellow. I heard things about your problem, Barnaby. A banker who has an eye on your ranch. I'll tell you all about it while you treat yourself to some of Sarah's cooking. Come, come inside without delay. Thanks. So I borrowed some money, $5,000 for Mr. Tanner, 
on the assurance that I needn't worry if I couldn't repay according to the terms of the mortgage. But you see, it was a verbal agreement with no witnesses. So now Tanner intends to foreclose. Yeah, that's what he'd like to do. He knows his property is valuable. He knows my livestock is valuable under ordinary conditions. I'd be able to pay the money without difficulty as soon as the price of beef gets back to normal. I've heard that Tanner's doing the same thing with a lot of other ranches around here, Barney. Yes, that he is, my friend. That he is. He's a land grabber. Skinflint. A mangy, double-dealing, sidewinding, two-faced. Well, in words of one syllable, he's a skunk, so help me. But he'll get his money. Barnaby, where are you going to get $5,000? I received a letter this morning, my dove. A letter from a friend in Red Pine. Jim Barton, by name. He's going to loan me the cash. A red pine is quite a distance from here, Barnaby. Yeah, I can make the trip all right. But if you, my friend, want to perform a great public service, there are other ranchers who are not as fortunate as I. Others who don't have a friend with 5,000 available dollars. If you could find a way to persuade the banker to give these others a little time... Uh, Tonto's looking around town now. He's learning all he can about Mr. Tanner and the men with whom he associates... Perhaps something can be done. In the cafe that evening, Mr. Tanner, the banker, met Squint, a man who did certain odd jobs for him. Squint had a way of learning things. Oh, Spugs is getting the cash from Jim Barton at Red Pine. I know that because I've seen the letter he got from Barton. Hey, hey, I figured on owning the bog's property. Well, what are you going to lose it for? What do you mean, Squint? You needn't let him get that cash. No? He's riding for Red Pine tonight. He's coming back tomorrow afternoon. Late. Hey, go on, Squint. He was held up and robbed on the way back. He couldn't pay off the mortgage. You could get his place. Now, I'd be willing to risk holding him up for the $5,000. Half of the cash. Half? I said half. Uh, you hate to see a dollar get away from you, don't you, Tanya? Could you, Willie Bugs? Well, I don't know why not. Plenty of hiding places along the trail between here and Red Pine. Very well. Hey, Tanner. Huh? That Redskin's been watching us. Think he knows what we've been talking about? Yeah. He wouldn't be interested. <laughs> Banker Tanner was mistaken. The Indian Tonto was keenly interested in the conversation. Soon after leaving the cafe, he was with the Lone Ranger in the well-concealed camp at the end of town. He quickly told of the conversation between Squint and the banker. The masked man made a strange decision. We could prevent the whole up, Tonto. But it would be impossible to prove that Tanner had anything to do with it. Uh, that right. The conversation proved that Tanner's a crook. Tonight, we'll see what we can learn in his bank. Tomorrow, we'll try to find a way to link him with a robbery. It was a little later the same night. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had entered the bank through a window. The moonlight slanted through that same window, and by its light, the masked man examined files in Tanner's office. Here are the mortgages, Tonto. Oh, and you'll find them. That good? Seems that every mortgage in this file is just about to come due. You find Boggs' mortgage? Well, here it is. Boggs, Barnaby, $5,000. We'll take it with us, Tonto, and examine it more carefully by better light. I've got you so, covered. What's that? Stay right where you are. Open there. It's the law speaking, mister. There was just a warning. Make a move and I'll put a bullet to you. Now stand still till I get a light going. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were surprised by the sudden appearance of the sheriff while they were in the Tanner Bank in search of irregularities in the banker's mortgage negotiations. Stand right where you are. I can see against the window. I'm lighting a lamp, but I can shoot fast at the slightest move. All right, all right, Sheriff. Take it easy. Got you flat-footed, didn't I? I suspected something when I saw that open window. That's where we made a mistake. Yeah, there. Now I can see you. Mass by Ginger. What's that you got in your hand? It's a mortgage. The one Tanner holds on Barnaby Boggs' property. Mortgage, huh? Huh? Well, that's a darn funny thing to be stealing. We're not stealing it. We're not stealing anything. You know the situation in this community, Sheriff. Don't come no closer to me. Stand right where you are. You needn't be afraid. Afraid? Why, Dad ratted, I'm the one that's holding the gun. That's just a temporary condition. Huh? Sheriff, Tanner's been foreclosing mortgages on a lot of property around here. I know that. He's a skinflint, but I can't... When he uh, granted these mortgages, he made promises he never intended to keep. In effect, those were verbal contracts that he's illegally broken... He was careful, however, never to make those promises in front of witnesses. I've heard talk. So he can't be held to them. But he may have overstepped himself. He may have drawn up these mortgages illegally. That's what I'm here to find out. Doggone, you don't talk like a crook. Of course I don't. But that mask... Here, uh, take a look at these mortgages. Now, hold on. Don't you get no closer. (laughs) Here, Sheriff. You know something about legal forms. Now, these agreements are in order... Yeah, this one, for example, is witnessed by two men. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Why, I'll take you... your gun. Dad, Reddit, you tricked me. But you'll be sorry. Out the window, Tonto. Get the horses. Uh, let me get them. Hey, come back here. Sheriff, we're on the same side of the fence. You and I have different methods, but we're working toward the same end. We meet again, Sheriff. Yeah, we'll meet again, all right. We'll meet. And when we do, you better look out. Don't Doggone, I hope that gent does do something about Tanner. <laughs> yes, sirree. Old Barnaby's done plenty of talking about the Lone Ranger. The sheriff went to the cafe where he reported the incident to banker Tanner, who was still seated at a table with his associate nicknamed Squint. A few moments later, Squint and Tanner were on their way to the bank. I wonder who them fellas were, Tanner. You sneak thieves, most likely. Squint, mm. you were starting to red by. But Boggs won't be getting back here till tomorrow afternoon. There's plenty of time. I don't want you to stop him too close to town. I want you to get him soon after he leaves Red Pine. Now then, you get that envelope with the money and bring it straight to me without opening it. I'll do the dividing. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Only when I can see you. Now get going. Barnaby Boggs reached Red Pine on schedule and received the $5,000 in cash from his friend Jim Barton. He started for home. Get up there. But had been in the saddle for less than an hour Get when up. he heard someone shouting his name. Sakes alive! Ho, oh, oh. ho! He turned in the saddle and saw two horsemen riding to overtake him. One was his friend, Jim Barton. The other was his masked friend, the Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, oh. Sakes alive! What are you doing here? We've been trying to catch up to you. But, Jim, you... What are you doing, riding with the... Uh, the masked man? Well, he got to my place soon after you'd left. We, uh, sort of got acquainted. Yeah? Uh, Barnaby... There's a chance that Jim made a mistake in the envelope he gave you. A mistake? Yeah, let me see that envelope I gave you, Barnaby. I want to be sure you've got the right one. That's right here, Jim. Yes, neat right here. You, uh, you're not going back on that loan, are you? <laughs> not a chance. You see, I had two envelopes were just about alike. After you left, I got the winner if I'd given you the right one. <laughs> oh, well, is that the right one? Yep, this is it, all right. <clears throat> I didn't want to break the seal on the other one. <clears throat> Here you are. It's all right, Barnaby. You can go on home and pay off Banker Tanner. Yes, yes, you're right. Time is the essence. The deadline is six o'clock. Adios, Jim. Adios. Hasta la vista, Barnaby. Come on, Sylvie. Yeah, yeah, hasta la vista. Come on, get up there. Barnaby continued on his way, well pleased with the world at large. 
In his pocket, he carried the envelope that should temporarily, at least, solve his financial problems. He rounded a turn and was startled to see a man whose face was concealed by a bandana and whose hand held a heavy gun. Boggs was forced to give the robber the valuable envelope he carried. After his loss, Barnaby Boggs was a deflated individual. His spirits hit rock bottom. He completed his homeward journey at a slower gait. The six o'clock deadline had lost all meaning. Now it didn't matter when he reached home. His wife suspected that something had gone wrong by the way Barnaby reined up and dismounted. She was sure of it when she saw his dragging steps as he approached the house. Seated on the porch, Barnaby told of his loss and found a sympathetic listener. But there was nothing you could do about it, Barnaby. It wasn't your fault. No, fixing the blame wouldn't help, Sarah. Oh, I don't know why it is that hard luck always comes in chunks. Now I've got to lose the ranch, and I'll still owe $5,000. We've got to find some way to pay back, Jim Barton. Well, this ranch would bring at least twice what I owe if I could sell it. But you can't. Mr. Tanner is going to take it over. Yes, and right soon. Fact is, Sarah, it's a matter of minutes. Minutes? Look, over yonder, the banker, and he's got the sheriff with him. Oh. I suppose he'd just about lose his mind if it got to be a couple of minutes after six o'clock and I was still on his property. We have to get out of the house tonight. Yeah, I expect so. Good evening, Barnaby. Oh, 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 oh. Evening, Sheriff. I reckon you know why we're here, Barnaby. Right. I expect you have $5,000 ready for me. I... No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't? Well, you know the terms of our agreement... You ought to pay me $5,000 on the mortgage or get out. How soon do you want to take possession of the property, Mr. Tanner? Well, I'll not insist that you get out tonight. You can have until noon tomorrow. Oh. Tanner, that don't give me much I'm sorry. Time. That's the best I can do. All right, darling. Hey, what was that? You're going to do a lot better than that. The masked man by Juniper. My sakes alive. Who, who are you? Where'd you come from? Hollow and I have been in back of the house. We left our horses there. A friend of yours is with us, Barnaby. Uh, friend? Hi there, Barnaby. I decided to come over here and see what your property looked like. Well, Jim Barton. Who are these men? Who's that masked man, that Indian? Jim Barton's a friend of Barnaby Boggs, Tony. Uh, very well. You can witness this eviction. Sheriff, serve the formal notice. Not so fast now, Mr. Tanner. I uh, reckon you'd better go a little easy. Tanner, before the sheriff can serve notice... You've got to produce a mortgage. Produce a mortgage? Why? It's up to you to produce proof that Barnaby owes money to you. Isn't that true, Sheriff? Well, I reckon it is. Oh, he'll produce it all right. Yes, I certainly shall. I have it right here. Good. Look it over, Sheriff. Make sure it's drawn up in the proper form and witnessed. Well, it's witnessed all right enough. And this sure looks to be Barnaby's signature. It is. Uh, woe is me, it is. Never saw a man that could write his name with so many flourishes. See if there's anything else on that mortgage, Sheriff. Huh? Anything else? Here, look along the edge of it, Sheriff. You'll find some initials there. They're my initials. J.B. I put them there myself. <laughs> Sure enough. And there are a number of people in Red Pine who watched Jim initial that document. But, uh, no, wait, she here. Otto, you see that Tanner keeps quiet. Ah, uh, no, you keep quiet. Sheriff, you had a report on a whole level. That's right. You were told that Barnaby Boggs was held up and robbed on his way to Red Pine. The highwayman stole an envelope from you, Barnaby. The envelope held the mortgage. What? The mortgage? Yes. When the masked man and I stopped you on the trail, we switched envelopes. I took back the one that held the cash, gave you the one that held the mortgage with my initials on it. That mortgage was stolen from my office. It was stolen last night. And it was stolen from Barnaby Boggs. The difference is, when Boggs was held up, the thief expected to find an envelope full of cash. But, uh, the no... thief turned that envelope over to you, Tanner. The fact that you have the mortgage proves you sent Squint to rob Barnaby Boggs. No, no. no. Oh, yes, it does. And to back that proof, we've got Squint's word. What? I arrested him as soon as he left your bank after turning the envelope over to you. It's a lie. I don't believe it. Squint's confessed. That mortgage was stolen from me in the first place. Tanner, eh? on the strength of Squint's confession, this whole affair can be taken into court. Why not take it there and see what a jury has to say? A jury made up of the townsmen who have learned to hate you. Oh, wait. Uh... Everyone in Springville has been waiting for you to make a mistake. Ah, but you've been shrewd. 
You've seen that all of your agreements were legal. How about it, Tanner? But I have never... <laughs> Look here, Barnaby. Let's talk this over privately. Just the two of us, eh? Oh, gone it, Tanner. You must be an awful jughead to produce that mortgage. You must have known there was some sort of funny business when Squint got it instead of the cash. He didn't have no choice, Barnaby. If he didn't produce the mortgage, he couldn't foreclose. Even if he did suspect some sort of a trap, there was nothing he could do about it. Unless he forged another mortgage, in which case he'd have surely gone to jail. Now, look, wait, wait. I, I don't want a lot of trouble. I'm not a rich man. Like fun you're not, you old skin flint. Barnaby, let's start over. Let's extend the mortgage. You just forget the payment for the time being. Barnaby you're... isn't going to continue under obligation to you, Tanner. Uh, and he doesn't want any favors from you. Jim Barton has a cash to pay that mortgage. You're doggone right I have. <coughs> Here, take this and give Barnaby a receipt. Barnaby, but Why, that... do as I tell you. Barnaby, you can pay me back whenever it's convenient. Oh, Barnaby, we'll not lose our range. Sheriff, you know where to go from here. You bet I do. Otto, Barnaby won't need us. That, that's my man. Tanner, it... Barnaby has a case against you just as much as he's got a case against Squint. If he presses the charge, there'll be a trial. You and Squint will be in court. And by thunder, when the rest of the mortgages you're holding come due... You'll be in jail. No, no, Barnaby, please listen to me. Let's start over. Let's begin all over. We, we'll now pick... you're talking. Start over. Start over with all the mortgages you're holding. Eh? Give the people around here a chance to keep their property. Maybe if you were to do something like that between now and tomorrow morning, Barnaby would forget his charges. Eh, hey, Barnaby? Uh, Sheriff, yeah. it looks to me as if you've taken matters out of my hands. You talk like you believe in that masked man. <laughs> I learned a few things when he called me this afternoon. He did? That masked man? Yep, I suspected who he was last night, Tanner. I was sure of it when he called on me a little while ago and laid some cards face up on the table. Tanner, people around here will all be grateful to Barnaby when you become a changed man. But they'll be wrong. The gratitude will be misplaced. The credit should rightfully go to the Lone Ranger. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.